a guy in Tampa. Hello, how are you doing this uh, afternoon? I'm trying to do well, uh, guy. <laughs> okay, two things. Yeah. On uh, the Christianity issue, if somebody was really a Christian, first and foremost, they wouldn't have that bumper sticker on their car. So I question whether or not the person is really a Christian to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at the tenets of Christianity and, you know, all the things that are written down as opposed to what people do. You know, they say in the name of God or in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, they go dimensionally opposed to the idea of Christianity. When they burn crosses in people's yard or hang somebody from a tree or put a bumper sticker on their car, you know, saying that I should kill a Muslim, that's not a Christian act. That's the act of somebody who's very hateful. Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we got some crazy people that have finally gotten to positions of power uh, in this country more so now than ever before. And they're pitting people against each other based on artificial constructs like race. They pit people against each other on uh, religious issues. And that's just to keep us, the people, the masses, apart from working with each other. Because it's a small group of people globally, when you think about it. And if we stop listening to their lives, if we stop listening to their narrative, uh, they lose their power. That's what they fear more than anything else. So... I agree with you. Uh, Guy, let me go to the first uh, part of what you said. Yes, I know, because there are people who do terrible things and they call themselves Muslims and uh, Jewish people and Sikh. And, uh, I, I understand completely, but uh, put yourself uh, in a, the shoes of um, a young uh, girl walking, uh, wearing the hijab. So she, she is saying, I am a Muslim, and then she passes by this with all this negativity with uh, like you said exactly we have uh, people in power uh, who are uh, fermenting uh, such uh, hatred and racism uh, not only against muslims but also minorities and mexicans and black people and everybody yeah. but would i be allowed to have such a bumper sticker on my car me arab american palestinian muslim woman saying kill somebody else or a cat or a dog you think no, see, well, there's a case actually going on right now about this idea of your speech as a young girl that's uh, on trial because they say she uh, talked her boyfriend into killing himself. And she got, I think, 15 years. Yeah, so we're looking at your speech can get you imprisoned. Now, while in the case of somebody saying jump, while I think that's not the best thing to do, um, I can see where what they're doing now with this case can go down the road of them attacking other kinds of speech that's not as damaging to people. Like if you speak truth to power, well, power doesn't like for people to speak truth to them. So they're going to lock you up now because you tell the truth. I, um, hope not. I, can, I can see where, you know, this whole thing about freedom of speech is, is a great idea, but I can see where the powers that be don't like the idea. So they're going to go in a roundabout way. And, you know, even now, when this fella, this orange fella got in the White House, all of a sudden there was this thing about, oh, well, we don't have to be politically correct anymore. Okay. Okay? <clears throat> so now all of a sudden, out of the woodwork, you have bumper stickers like what you just mentioned on the air. Um, you have people in restaurants attacking other people because they speak a different language to their family member. And they're talking, they're minding their business. And, and you see this stuff all over the internet, and you wonder, you know, like, where is it going to end? Because we, people that are considered uh, minorities, which I got a different attack on that, uh, people that are considered, you know, coming from other countries or whatnot, they aren't the ones doing this type of attack. We're not going out jumping in people's face. It's coming at us because we've been wanting to do that for quite some time, like it was back in the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. So now we got a president that helps to, you know, empower people with that mindset to attack. I mean, I didn't somebody would grab a young woman by her G and try to snatch it off. Mm -hmm. 
I've seen video of that. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, there are teachers that uh, change the hairdo of a young black girl because they don't like her afro. You, you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I see. Physical personal attacks on people are being sanctioned right now, seemingly, by the American government. We'll see, Guy. Maybe this is... Uh, thank you so much for calling, uh, but we'll see if... Uh, I hope there is a lawyer uh, listening uh, and can tell us, like... All these fish people right now, they're calling. Islam, Judaism, and Christian, it's the same guy. Islam, Judaism, and Christian, it's the same guy. Abraham and God, so it doesn't think quite so much about the But the reason I call, uh, I don't know if you discussed or aware about the, the bill that produced by Senator Cardin of Maryland, the anti-Israel boycott bill. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yes, we talked about it oh. uh, last week, but uh, I think Democracy Now! mentioned that some of the senators are withdrawing from it because it criminalizes free speech. It's fascism. I mean, I think... <sighs> free speech to, 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 to boycott Israel, but free speech to make you a felon and have uh, hundreds of thousands of Hell, it's just unbelievable. How did you get to that day? They say, Gus, that they didn't even know that that clause was part of it. They thought, you know, they will rush to be pro-Israel as usual, but uh, they really, many of them did not read it. And those who are reading this clause are withdrawing their names because, you know, this is uh, uh, the ACLU. But, but the, the thing is, I only read one article in the Washington Post on the Democracy Now! Facebook page. So I, I contacted every major newspaper, writer, and the networks, and they never bring it up, they want to stop. It's a taboo to criticize Israel, because... Uh, I mean, no, factually, Netanyahu is a fascist, and Israel, regrettably, is an apartheid paper. But to say that if I criticize Russia or the leader of something that I'm a felon as an American, I can boycott American companies, but I can't boycott Israel, it's phenomenal. It's fine. I know there are people who buy at uh, McDonald's because they don't like their sandwiches. And yet he, he criticized them. It's another thing also, the, the campus is supporting the point part of Israel. Is that in California, I know with Diane Feinstein and in Cuomo, the double in New York, that if you were, uh, Boycott Israel, if you know, with one Palestinian organization, that they will not give you a contract. New York State will not give you a contract. That's that lunatic speech. But the most harrowing thing is when students, California got Diane Feinstein and her husband, who's a war prophet here, that they made it that if you protested and you're a student mm -hmm. and you decided to boycott with Israel, that not only can you be Suspended, but you could be expelled from school. Unbelievable. I know, Gus. It's unbelievable, but it's happening. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the phone call. Gus is uh, referring. Maybe we should um, uh, have a show on this. But there is an anti-BDS uh, bill, meaning that you cannot uh, boycott and divest from uh, companies that do business in uh, illegal settlements. Settlements are areas that were f uh, confiscated. They, they were uh, uh, towns and uh, lands inhabited by uh, Palestinians. The in uh, natural the original inhabitants the natives of Palestine were living on and still goes on on a daily basis where bulldozers will come and bulldoze Palestinian homes and then take them and build uh, what they call as settlements that really, really should be called colonies because they are uh, they are colonized they are inhabited they're not empty lands and they settled them uh, so there, so for instance, there is a huge movement like it was in South Africa, uh, with the apartheid state that you can boycott. Uh, uh, a cultural boycott, political boycott, but most importantly, economic boycott of uh, produce coming out of South Africa to force the uh, racist government to stop its uh, uh, policies against the black people there. So Palestinians uh, who are seeking a peaceful means to uh, try to influence the decision making when it comes to the rights of Palestinians have uh, decided to create BDS movement 
uh, and BDS is to boycott these uh, products that are coming out of uh, Israeli settlements. So you have businesses, American businesses, who wanted, who had uh, factories or uh, restaurants or uh, um, whatever. Uh, products that they produce, if they are uh, based in a settlement, they close them down because the BDS movement is uh, is an international way of uh, assisting uh, people. So you don't have to be in a physical location to boycott, for instance, um, IBM or uh, whatever company or Caterpillar in particular. There is a huge movement against uh, Caterpillar because they create uh, huge uh, bulldozers and these bulldozers sadly um, bulldoze Palestinian homes. Um, uh, you know, we went from one topic to the other. Let me go to 